So when we are looking at a problem like this, ladies and gentlemen, the main important thing I want you guys to understand is, again, we need to understand the transformations. You have to understand the transformations. And we need to understand the transformations from our parent graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back again and review y equals a times b raised to the x. Again, when you're graphing this, the graph crosses at the value of a. Brian, again, this would not be the time. This would be the time you just want to be focused up here. Okay? So when we're looking at this, we need to identify what is a. And if you're really, really having trouble, identify all, every single value. All right? Now, the next thing is, that is our parent graph. But we also talked about y equals a times b raised to the x minus h plus k. So if you're really, really having trouble with this, I would, I would recommend writing in what a is, writing in what b is, writing in what h is, and writing in what k is. Just write in every single value. It's the same, because the main important thing is the same thing I want you guys to understand. So in this case, there was a pretty good question. You know, is this a negative 3 or is, a, or is there a there? Well, remember, there's always a 1 in front, right? If there's no number actually in front of b, you don't have another number like a 5 or a 7 or whatever, you know there's a 1 there. So in reality, it's not a negative 3. It's actually a negative 1. So I would write a equals negative 1, b equals 3, and then h equals uh, positive 1. Why is h equal 1 there 1? It's a negative. Yes, but remember, though, the formula is x minus h. x minus h. x minus h. So what is h? 1. So now we go to graph. So we need to remember what does a do. And if you're having trouble with your transformations, the easiest way I remember this is go back to quadratics. What did the a do? Not only did a affect the stretching and compression of the graph, it also determined if it was reflecting up or, or, I'm sorry, opening up or opening down or reflecting over the x-axis. So since this is a negative, what am I doing? I'm reflecting over the x-axis. So when I told you guys to write the um, transformations, you'd want to write them down. So you're going to have a reflect the x-axis. Do you guys remember what did B do? Do you guys remember when we did the graphs on the, on the TV? All B did was just determine how fast the graph grew. Right? So it doesn't really, uh, so b is not really a transformation. It's just a way to determine how really fast the graph is growing. So b is not really going to have a fa it's going to have an effect on a graph, but not actually, it's just going to be um, a mild one since um, go through. And then h is going to tell us to go right 1. Now remember, a is also where the graph crosses the y axis. So if, the graph cro if a is negative 1, that means my new y intercept is at 0, comma, negative 1. But then what happened? My graph got shifted to the right one, correct? So therefore, now that's my new y-intercept. Really, really need you to pay attention. So my graph is going to look something like this. So my y-intercept, which is originally at negative 1, 0, the graph got shifted over to the right. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is also the domain and range. So to understand the domain and range, we need to remember that the exponential graph has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, when I reflected this over, did that asymptote change at all? By reflecting this graph over, did my asymptote change? No, your asymptote was only going to change if you're shifting the graph up or down. Am I shifting the graph up or down? Is there any k? k was equal to 0. So I'm not shifting the graph up or down at all. So the domain, again, is how far the graph is going to the left, how far it's going to the right. That's not affected by the horizontal asymptote. So therefore, Nathan, when you turn your desk the other way, you get negative infinity to infinity. And then we get the range is going to be how low does this graph go to how high does it go? Well, remember, the asymptote is where this graph approaches. It's not going to cross back over this asymptote. So how low does this graph go? How low down is this graph going to go? Negative infinity. And how high is it going to go? Close. It doesn't cross this asymptote. It's approaching 0. OK? Based on me doing that one problem, can you guys maybe try to put in a little bit more effort into the next example?